Chinese Communist Party is desperately trying to dig a secret that will bring China to its knees. The Chinese officials have a lot to answer for. People are in the streets, workers are trapped in quarantines, hunger is the silent killer in China, and citizens want a vote. But in the middle of all of this, 400 million have disappeared in China. Just like that. Let's find out how. What does the Shanghai data breach tell us? Like every classic Chinese tale of propaganda and secrets, the disappearance of 400 million citizens starts from a data breach. Shanghai Public Security Bureau has a lot to answer for. Why was the data cloud so unsecured? Was this an American job or a whistleblower trying to expose the police department for its incompetence? The entire population in China was compromised when their personal information was readily available on the dark web, including their COVID-19 test results. Now that's horrifying. Even with rigid state surveillance in the country, citizens were horrified when the most private and intimate details about their life were out for grabs. The sealed criminal cases were making rounds on the internet as if it were everybody's business. The cost of the data was just 10 bitcoins. What the hackers didn't know was that their 10 bitcoins are going to expose the Chinese Communist Party for their most horrific crime. Supposedly, the leaked and publicly available data accounts for the entire population of the country. On paper, that's a number of almost 1.4 billion, only second to India's population. Yep, China is no longer the most populated country in the world. We shall unpack that soon enough, but here's the most terrifying fact of the day. The Shanghai Public Security Bureau data breach only shows a 1 billion Chinese population. For a system that maintains official records for the states, it's not a mistake, it's an official statistic. Turns out it's a huge possibility that the CCP is lying to us. In the crisis of its declining population, the country is most probably reeling from the loss of 400 million people, and the whole world is on the brink of an economic meltdown. How did 400 million people disappear? China is in a state of chaos. The new epoch for the country is just about civil unrest, waves of democratization, and the failure of the zero COVID policy. While the whole world is recovering from the turmoils of the pandemic, China is living through another round. The hospitals in China look like the sets of some gory horror movie. There are heaps of dead bodies lying around, and the pile keeps getting bigger and bigger. All the COVID-19 units are working at maximum capacity. Doctors don't get to see the light of day as they can't make their way out. Due to rapid mass testing for COVID, doctors are looking after hundreds of patients in a 24-hour window. China's hospitals look busier than its heavily prioritized industrial units. And that's an image that speaks for China's dooms. The Epoch Times, a Chinese newspaper based in NYC, is one of the most notable arch nemesis of the CCP. Recently, the newspaper published a report that has taken the world by a raging storm. The pandemic has killed more than 400 million people in China, and the storm wouldn't stop unless it has taken a collective of 500 million citizens. All things considered, the future in China is bleak, grim, and perfectly dystopian. On the outlook, the population in the country is declining at a very fast pace. In 2022, the country also reported negative growth in population for the first time since 1961. Official CCP reports indicate that there was a decrease of 850,000 people from the overall population of 1.41175 billion. These stats are enough to put China below India in the population index. But in all fairness, the Communist Party has a remarkable track record for lying, manipulating, and rigging the statistics. Do we have any reassessed research process to back up the state's claim on its current population number? No, absolutely not. On the other hand, China's empty industrial units and oversaturated hospitals are telling a more believable story, a dystopian story of China's economic meltdown. What does the mass disappearance mean? for China's economy. Even before the COVID outbreak, China was struggling with an aging and declining population. Sure, there aren't any family number limitations in the country, but the impacts of one child and two child exist within the family culture. First things first, people don't want to have children in China. That single sentence is Xi Jinping's worst nightmare that's more of a Groundhog Day. Every day, the leader supreme wakes up to deal with the fact that his labor force is dying. 
Here's the thing, the state doesn't care about its citizens. It failed to address the post-COVID health crisis, failed to pay the workers on time, lowered the wages and, of course, tried to push poverty under its rug of propaganda. At this point, it's very hard to ignore the harsh reality that people in China are living on the brink of the poverty line. Most state-owned enterprises have slashed their salary budgets as the factories were forced to shut down. People were rendered jobless, and there wasn't any welfare program to feed the family. What does this mean then? It's simple, yet frightening. People in China can't afford to have kids. This is not a very new or shocking realization for the CCP, which is redirecting most of its resources to infrastructure development. But people can't eat new highways and bridges, right? If anything, the Chinese state is a living paradox. Just in 2022, its population dividend indicated something horrifying. Almost 62.5 of the country's population is within the working age group. That statistic fell by 0.5% and continues to decline to this date. So not only Xi Jinping has questionable priorities, he'd also find himself at the edge of a labor crisis soon enough. You don't need to know deep economic theory to realize that you can't exactly maintain your economic superpower status when you don't have a massive workforce. Plus, the ongoing turbulent state of China is adding more fuel to the fire that's burning in Beijing. What is happening in China today? Simply put, China is in shambles. After every gimmick that the CCP has pulled up, it was mostly forgiven for its worst human rights atrocities. Or they did a perfect job in suppressing any opposition and dissent that came their way. But it was CCP's zero COVID policy and its mismanagement that triggered a wave of protests and civil unrest in China. To top off the population crisis, the country has brewed up an economic crisis of its own. To lessen the number of COVID cases, Xi Jinping ordered the forced quarantine of his citizens in their homes and workplaces. If there's even a hint of suspicion of a COVID outbreak, factories are being shut down with the workers inside. Factories don't look like factories anymore, they look like prisons. You can catch a glimpse of the trapped workers begging for food and medicines. There are barbed wires around the quarantined industrial units and the Chinese COVID law enforcement is deployed everywhere. Believe it or not, this single visual from Guangzhou has disrupted the entire global supply chain. Factories in China can't handle big production orders lately, and the deliveries of processed goods are delayed. Just in case you were wondering why the delivery of your iPhone 14 got delayed, now you know why. Not only the factory workers are locked up and not receiving their wages, but they're also actively protesting against the Chinese corporations and government. Apple's mega manufacturing partner, Foxconn, is one of those companies. Of course, you'd never hear about this in mainstream media, but Foxconn's workers literally had to escape from the manufacturing unit to escape hunger and COVID. If there was a manual for how to push your country to an economic meltdown, this has to be the trick number one. And the implications are going to impact the entire world in ways unimaginable. How can the shrinking population in China paralyze the world? Look around you, China's influence is everywhere. And nope, that's not an exaggeration. Your iPhone, battery for your electric car, your computer, and even your toilet paper. China is at the core of producing all of these products and much more. So yes, Chinese economic power is a culture, you can't really escape it. And that's exactly what you know, it is a raging economic superpower. What you can't produce in your country, China does for you, much cheaper and much faster. But what if it all goes away? Well, that might seem like a very hypothetical question, but it really isn't. Again, the disappearance of 400 million Chinese citizens is a global threat. If China stops exporting these typical daily use items, the biggest pitfall is going to be inflation. Even the most developed countries like the US can't produce goods cheaply. They are obligated to pay the labor fairly, sure, yet that's one consideration. China can produce everything because it has an abundant labor supply and heaps of raw materials. And if its labor supply disappears, there's no one to run the factories. That's very much our new reality. Do you think China would be able to recover from the population loss? Let us know in the comments below. Give us a big thumbs up and don't forget to watch our next video.